Northern Manitoba, the real and genuine remote Canadian wilderness on the edge of the subarctic tundra. That's where our adventure begins. You know, a lot of people ask me, why would I want to come to Little Duck, fish Little Duck Lake, Medjolini Lake on the fly? The real deal is the fall lake trout. You can sit out on the middle of Medjolini Lake and catch 35 to 45 inch lake trout in three to five feet of water on a 10 weight fly rod. And believe me, it is unbelievable. There, there's one right there. Another good one? Yeah. Now, will this fish break 37, do you think, Wayne? In the bag. Oh, nice fish. Oh. As you can see, you got nice fast water, literally a half mile or more of beautiful fast water with lots of edges. Perfect for Arctic growling. They'll be safe here. The North offers opportunities for fishing and hunting that is second to none. You're not nudging into people. You're not people beating you to a fishing spot. This is the real deal up here. It's a paradise. And believe me, everybody that's interested in fishing and hunting should experience the lodge at Little Duck and Northern Manitoba at some point in their life. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Travel Manitoba, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. Our adventure began in Thompson, Manitoba, where we boarded a turboprop plane and took a short but comfortable 75-minute flight to the lodge's private runway. As you look out the windows at the wondrous landscape passing below, you realize that the lodge at Little Duck is literally surrounded by thousands of square miles of wilderness, totally void of people. Dave, I'm the only guy who's not in camo. <laughs> I'm Colin. Yeah, how are you? This is Ryan. A land of caribou and wolves. A place historically where trappers and native peoples lived off the land. And of course, there's the incredible untouched fishing that brings us to these northern lands. These massive waters possess numbers of fish that are almost hard to comprehend thanks to virtually little human impact. Our prime species this week here at the Lodge at Little Duck are lake trout, northern pike, and of course, the beautiful and acrobatic Arctic growing. It's early September and a special time for fly fishers to visit. This is a small window that occurs every year when you get a shot to catch a legitimate giant lake trout, the true leviathans of the deep. For this week, I'm very blessed to be guided by an experienced, jovial, and well-respected angler, Wayne Gillis. Wayne has been guiding in Canada's far north for nearly 40 years and has virtually seen it all. 
Wayne is one of those special people you meet from time to time who can amaze you with stories of the North, make you chuckle with a witty comment, then give you solid advice on the right fly to use with what presentation needed to catch fish. This is going to be a fun week with Wayne. And like me, he's super excited to see what giants we can catch on a fly. I guess first thing, this is the first place we've come to, Wayne, and it's uh, you got a shoal up here, and you said it's seven, ten feet, big flat, and it drops up in deep water. Why are the lake trout here this uh, over second week of September? Why are they going to be here? The reason the fish are here is the lake's turned over, and the water temperatures got favorable to where they'll come up on the reefs and uh, into the shallows, and it is spawning time, so. They spawn in different uh, intervals, and usually the smaller first, and then bigger and bigger. And uh, they'll come up in waves and uh, look to, for good spawning beds. But the whole time they're here, they're feeding, aren't they? Well, they will. Sometimes it's not necessarily for food. It depends. Uh, sometimes it's out of aggression, like you would have drifting, say, a row bag past salmon numerous times, and you trigger a strike or a pike that isn't quite feeding, ready to feed. The same with the lake trout. They will hit out of aggression too, not just feeding, but it's a bit of both. It's a combination. So Ryan told me that sometimes you had to really reef it fast to get yeah. them to, to follow. Yeah. You do. Oh, there's one. Big one. Right there. Right behind there. See if we can get him coming. Go! Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice colors. I just, yeah, incredible colors. And I just spotted him. He was down deep. And he stopped following, and I turned the fly and just gave it a couple changes of direction. He came, or she, looks like, came right onto it. Wow. All right, see if we get in fast. All right. Whew. Nice fish. Oh, you got him? Yeah. Fish? Yeah. Good, it might be a good one then. Yeah. And what's interesting is that I stopped retrieving, so I was going fast before, and this guy took it on a dead drift. Ooh. It's a good fish, I think. It is, it's fighting like one. Whoa. It is a good fish. So I'm using a nine weight rod, and I've got 20 pound leader. Oh, yeah, look at that head shake. So look at the rod tip just bouncing. Whoa. I'm not winning this battle. It might be a while. <laughs> yeah. Bringing them up. I saw it. That's a good size fish. Yeah, it's a good fish. Good fish. Oh, there we go. Wow. So when we were in shallower water, we had to fish very aggressive and I had to strip fast to get them to hit. And then I had one over there on the top of the rock pile. The fly was literally laying on the top and it came up and ate it. I was getting ready to cast. And this guy, oh, look at this, look at this line. Oh. And uh, with this guy, it was the same. Basically, I paused, I was stripping, and I was just, Getting ready to talk to Wayne, and all of a sudden I saw the line straighten. I set the hook. <clears throat> now that was on the edge, wasn't it, Wayne? We were coming off the drop off. Yeah. Into deeper water. So we went from virtually four feet down to 14. So he was hanging off the edge. Oh, there's the air bubbles. <sighs> wow. 
what a powerhouse. I've only got one glimpse of this fish. It looked big. That's a little bigger fish here than that other spot weighing. Holy cow. That's what I said, we'll go to where the big dogs eat. Yep, this is a big fish. Oh, look at that. Nice fish. Look at that yeah. fish. Oh nice. my goodness. <laughs> And what's shocking is that we saw one like this in about six to eight feet of water. Followed in, it was in with a bunch of smaller fish. Big female, look at this powerhouse. Look at that. Okay, give it to you. There we go. <laughs> She's in the bag. This is worth all the flights to get here. What a special place. Water's cold, 47, 48 degrees. Yeah. My first master, 35 inches. Well, Thank you, Wayne. What are we, a couple hours into the trip? Yeah, and we've <laughs> already caught a mess of lake trout, but now we got a big one. Nice. Just so you know, last week the group caught how many master anglers? Oh, at least. 140 or something? Yeah. 140, over 35 inches. That's why it's worth all the flights to get here. Wow. Let's get another one. It's a big one. Is that? I think, well, look at the tail. Feels big. And that was in five feet of water. The fly just basically hit the water and I gave it one pull and it hit. So it was worth coming back up shallow to check. Yeah. Five feet of water. It feels really good. Oh, look, it's a big one and there's a bigger one with it. Holy cow. Look at them, there's three of them. Three of them. Look at that. Wow. In five feet of water. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this big girl in quick. There's one. Oh, <laughs> that was insane. Three big ones. Five feet of water, and the sun's out. Doesn't get any better than this. That is incredible. I'm just gonna get in here. It's not going to get anything to get this thing going. Oh. Uh oh. There she goes. She turned. So it was just 34, 35 inches, not quite a master, but, and then of course, two other ones right beside it. I hope our underwater camera got that because that's incredible. Five feet of water in the bright sun. Yeah, it was You're worth, right. worth coming back in for a look. Yeah, well, we're out in the deeper water, and Wayne said they're not out here now. Let's go on the top of the shelf and take a look, and you're bang on. After a good night's sleep, we started the day with a hot cup of coffee and an outstanding breakfast provided by the chefs at the lodge. Shortly after eating, we geared up, got into a boat and headed to the Wolverine River on the hunt for some epic Arctic grayling fishing.
So I just got out of the boat. Wayne's just above me. As you can see, you got nice, fast water here in the Wolverine River. It was all the way down here. There's like literally a half mile or more of beautiful, fast water with lots of edges. Perfect for Arctic growling. They'll be safe here. I brought both nymphs, uh, some little streamers, and a box of dry flies with my eight foot four weight rod. I mean, this is perfect for here. So what I think I'm gonna do to start off with, I'm gonna start fishing the edges of the fast water here in the seams. And then when it gets to a little bit softer water on the left here, then I'll switch over to a dry fly. Even though the sun's not out, hopefully they'll come up. I'm using about a eight, nine foot liter. I've actually got three X tippet on, which is a little bit heavy, but I also want to be able to get these fish in fast with the current. There's one. Again, using a woolly bugger right now, an olive one. And, uh, well, it's a good fish. And uh, barbless hooks, so it's easy to get them in and get the hook out. Now, unfortunately, I didn't bring my net, and the lodge only has giant nets. So if you come here, look at that, that's a good size art grilling. If you come here, look at that colors on that. That's a beautiful fish. Not bad for my first fish coming down here by myself. Okay, that popped out. Look at that. Beautiful. Arctic grilling, the ultimate dry fly fish. You can dead drift a dry fly or skate a caddis pattern on the surface. Either way, the grailing hammer it with gusto. There's no need for nymphs here. These grailing are always willing to rise for topwater flies. And on a four weight rod, this is so much fun. I use barbless hooks so I can quickly release the fish. It's just one fish after another. So much fun. Arctic grailing are a very underrated game fish, one that can be caught using a variety of flies, but most people use dry flies to target them. They can be really aggressive and provide consistent action and aerial entertainment. A great adversary for those new to fly fishing are those just looking to have a steady bend in the rod. Most anglers visiting the lodge at Little Duck are out chasing lake trout and pike, so the grailing see very limited pressure and the angling is usually exceptional. Since they're caught in the river, they can actually help save a day of fishing when it's far too windy on the main lake and boating is not an option. Arctic grailing range in size from 12 to 16 inches, but larger specimens up to 22 inches are very common. They can be easily identified by their colorful and very large dorsal fin, which is much larger than any other cold water fish. They can also be recognized by their large scales with either black or brown spots on the body behind the head. Grailing prefer eating both terrestrial and aquatic invertebrates and at times will also feed on small fish and fish eggs. Well, that didn't take long. Grailing came up really quick for the stimulator. Oh, it's nice fish again. Wow, we're getting so many nice ones. Now, around here, most of them are gonna be in that 12 to 16 inch size, but they get them 18 and 20 inches, even larger. I've been told, but I haven't seen it yet. So I'm just gonna bring that up, take that out. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow, that was an incredible hour and a half of dry fly fishing with a four weight rod for these Arctic growling. That was so much fun. I'm gonna go join Wayne now. I've had a great morning. We're gonna get some lunch, and I think we're gonna go out and either do some lake trout fishing or look for those giant pike. But either way, that's a great thing about coming up here is the diversity of the species as well as the different types of fishing you can do every day. Let's go. The equipment I brought for fishing the various species here is very straightforward. You definitely want a fast action, nine or 10 weight rod to punch big or weighted flies through the wind. 
Of course, you need to also have large arbor reels with quality drags as the lake trout will definitely test your equipment. You'll also need floating lines with short and aggressive heads to help turn over your flies. You'll also want to bring sink tip lines and even full sinking lines to ensure your flies get down to the rocky bottom where the lake trout prowl. For the Arctic grailing, I would recommend either a four or five weight rod equipped with a floating line. Usually you can count on mostly dry fly fishing for these fun and acrobatic fighters. Get much pressure, huh? After enjoying a great shore lunch, we headed back out on the lake. Wayne suggested we try targeting the plentiful pike that reside in the calm waters surrounding the lodge. I love catching pike on a fly and Wayne had no problem convincing me to give it a try. So I'm using a nine weight rod and a floating line. I like using a pike musky taper, a very aggressive, short, thick taper fly line, turns over big flies easily. And I've got it going to about six feet of 50 pound mono, loop to loop, and about two feet of bite wire. It's ideal so that if the pike wraps itself, which these fish often do, and it goes around the mandibles, it uh, won't slice. I'm not a big fan of using uh, mono or even uh, heavy uh, fluorocarbon. I had too many bite offs with it, so I don't want that to happen. But you don't have to fish deep here. The pike are in shallow bays, and I hear if you come here in the summer, pike fishing is really insane in the shallow bays. It's a bigger fish. All right. So you can see there's the lodge. And here we are. And there's our first pike. Uh. So we've had a really great day of grailing fishing. And now here we are literally just yards away from the lodge. And we're gonna do a little pike fishing. I'm just gonna pick this guy up quickly. First cast, nice little pike. 
And we've heard some big explosions out here. Just dead dark. Yeah, so I have a feeling there's gonna be lots more. How great is that? Right in front of the lodge. Oh, there's one. Another one. It's about the same size as the last one. In this cold water, they really fight well. Going around the back of the boat on me. I'll put it in the sun. And they get fairly large here. We haven't seen one yet. That's been gigantic, but I don't know. I could take 35 to 40 inch pike all day. Okay. Oh. Yep. Oh, he's right underneath the boat. I can take him around. Okay. Oh, a nice thick one. Look at that. How sweet is that? It's amazing that perch pattern's working so well here. And there's no perch, but it's bright and it's really gonna throw a lot of reflective light on this dark gray day. Let me show you this fly. It's one of my favorite flies for pike. It's a Murdich minnow. It's a great fly. Oh, there's one. Oh. How awesome is this? Just take a break. Oh, it's a nice fish too. Right in front of the lodge. Look at that. How cool. The pike action was virtually nonstop. They hammered every fly I cast to them. Northern pike over 40 inches are landed regularly within view of the lodge, and with a strong storm in the forecast, it sure was nice to be able to catch quality fish so close to our home for the entire week. It was so great to have access to outstanding fishing right in front of the lodge. After a fun morning of grailing fishing followed by a delicious shore lunch, catching some nice pike was the perfect way to end our day. You know, a lot of people ask me, why would I want to come to Little Duck, fish Little Duck Lake, Medjolini Lake on the fly? The answers are actually quite simple. We have Arctic grayling, we have Northern Pike, and we have lake trout, and all can be had at different times of the year on a fly. In the springtime, we have pike in six to 12, 18 inches of water, and it's sight fishing. It's absolutely amazing. The grayling in the rivers, and even out on the lake, you can catch them on a fly, and if you are a fly fisherman as compared to a spinner, you'll catch 10 to 1. The real deal is the fall lake trout. You can sit out on the middle of Nedjalini Lake on those mid-lake humps, reefs, big rock piles, and catch 35 to 45 inch lake trout in three to five feet of water on a 10 weight fly rod. And believe me, it is unbelievable. Oh. Is it fish or bottom? It's a fish, it's big. It's a fish. I can see it's a big, it's a big fish. There it is there. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 
There's a big fish. Traveling to the far north to visit the lodge at Little Duck was an amazing experience. A true once in a lifetime trip. Outstanding hospitality, guiding, and world-class fishing, all in a pristine wilderness setting. Honestly, this is a place I will never forget and encourage every angler to add this destination to your bucket list of places to go before you die you won't regret it. To learn more about this location, visit our website for more information. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you on the water soon. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Travel Manitoba, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada.